In this tutorial, we're exploring points of inflection. This session was inspired by question 3 from the 2022 QCAA Technology Active Mathematical Methods exam, or more specifically, student responses to the question. So, let's have a look at the question. The derivative of the function f of x is given by f dashed of x equals sine of x cubed over the domain from negative 1.8 to 1.8. The question asks us to determine how many points of inflection for f of x over this interval. Perhaps the most familiar way to identify points of inflection is to simply look at the graph and locate points where the curvature changes. In this question, we're not provided with the original function. Instead, we're provided with the derivative. Naturally, you might attempt to determine the original function. However, that's not so easy for this question. We therefore find ourselves in a less familiar environment. We need to understand how the derivative of a function can help identify points of inflection. To understand how this works, let's start by exploring a different function, where we can visually identify the points of inflection. Even if we don't know the equation, we can see that this function contains some points of inflection. We can draw a tangent to the curve at point P. Now watch what happens to the tangent as we move along the curve. Most of the time, the tangent just touches the curve. At the point of inflection, it passes through the curve. Points to the left of P lie above the tangent, and points to the right lie below the tangent. There's a change in curvature of the graph. Now let's focus on what's happening to the value of the gradient. As we approach an inflection point, the gradient is increasing. As we pass beyond the point of inflection, the gradient starts to decrease. We can make this change even more obvious by plotting the value for the gradient on the y-axis, using it like a number line. Now, as we approach the point of inflection from the left, the value for the gradient is going up and up and up. It's increasing. As we go beyond the point of inflection, the plotted value starts to go down. The way in which the gradient function is changing helps us locate points of inflection. We can use a graph to map the value of x and the corresponding value for the gradient. In other words, a graph of the derivative function. The change in direction of our point shows up as turning points in the derivative function. So, our new focus or problem to solve is how do we locate turning points on some function? Let's hide the original function and focus on its derivative. We want to locate the turning points on this function. To do this, we can find its derivative, which is the second derivative of the original function. We see each turning point on the red graph aligns to a zero on the black graph, the second derivative but there's more to it. Let's bring back the original graph. A point of inflection on the original graph aligns with a turning point on the first derivative and a zero on the second derivative. But there's still more. 
let's focus on the first point of inflection and the second derivative. To the left of the point of inflection, our original graph is concave up. The second derivative is positive. To the right of that first point of inflection, our original graph is concave down, and the second derivative is negative. Now let's move to the second point of inflection. On the original graph, to the left of the point of inflection, the graph is concave down. The second derivative is negative. To the right of the point of inflection, the graph is concave up, and the second derivative is positive. In general, if the second derivative is positive, the original function is concave up. If the second derivative is negative, the original function is concave down. This sign change in the second derivative is very important. Remember, our point of inflection represents a change in curvature. If the sign of the second derivative does not change, then neither does the curvature, and therefore there would be no point of inflection. We now have all the information we need to answer the original question. Let's see how you could use TI-INSPIRE to answer it. I'll start with a new document and insert a graphs application. We'll graph the function, the derivative function that was given to us, sine of x cubed, over the domain from negative 1.8 to 1.8. Make sure your calculator is in radians. Adjust the window settings. And now remember, the turning points on our derivative function represent points of inflection on the original. There appears to be four turning points. Now let's graph the second derivative to check particularly since the derivative function has a zero when x equals zero. Starting with the first turning point on the derivative function, the second derivative is positive to the left. So our original function must be concave up. The second derivative is negative to the right of this point, so the original function must be concave down. So therefore, there's a change in curvature on our original graph, the point of inflection. Let's have a look at the second turning point on the derivative function. The second derivative is negative to the left of this point, which means our original function is concave down, and to the right of the turning point, the second derivative is positive, which means our original function is concave up. Again, we have a change in the curvature, so our original function has a point of inflection. We're going to apply this same process to the other turning points on the derivative function and reach the same conclusions. But let's have a look at what's happening at the origin. The derivative of the original function is zero. But the derivative function doesn't have a turning point here. Furthermore, to the left of this zero, the second derivative is positive. In other words, the original function is concave up. To the right of this point, the second derivative is also positive, which means our original function is concave up. So there was no change in curvature at x equals zero, which means there is no point of inflection on the original function when x equals zero. So we can lock in four points of inflection on our original graph over the specified domain. So reviewing what we've managed to achieve, we've determined the number of points of inflection for a function that we've never actually seen. However, for those students doing specialist maths, 
you may want to generate a slope field using your calculator. If we set some specific conditions, we can get a pretty good idea on what that function looks like. And therefore, you can actually see where those points of inflection are on the function. And that's a wrap for this session. Check out our other videos or send us a request if there are other concepts you'd like covered. Thanks for watching.